Hello, everybody. I'm Commander JN Trax from the Loose Screws podcast, and we're going to go over some uh, combat basics, tips and tricks, tutorial, uh, this kind of stuff. Um, we did this uh, f- a couple of nights of this in the Discord, the Loose Screws Discord, and the feedback was really good. And um, some of the feedback was, where can I see the replay? And the fact is I didn't record it because uh, I was really just kind of making it up as we went along. I didn't really have anything in the way of notes. And I uh, didn't think the replay would be would be worth it. I wasn't even sure how it would go, but everybody seemed to really enjoy it. And there were people who, you know, couldn't get there until a little late or missed it entirely and really wanted to replay. So I'm going to uh, go uh, again and record it. And this time uh, with some notes, I did not script it or anything. Um, But this is all stuff that um, should be, you know, very helpful to anybody who's a new player wanting to get into combat or somebody who's not such a new player but hasn't done much combat. And um, some people even told us that they learned some things, even though they um, are somewhat experienced at combat. So there's, there's. Uh, hopefully, we're going to touch on a, a lot of different things. There's going to be a lot of things in here where um, it's something, some things that I've picked up kind of along the way, or from YouTubers when I was learning, um, and. I kind of kind of collating it all in one place. This is questions that we answer a lot in the Loose Screws Discord. And so let's do it. So first of all, um, understanding the ship is what I'm calling this section in my notes. So um, first of all, we're going to start off talking about the distributor. I'm going to go ahead and take off so that I can manipulate the distributor. So... Um, as we know, um, you can move the energy around the ship, um, engines, systems, and weapons. Um, the, the basics of this, I mean, engines, uh, we know affects your boost regen rate. So if this is full, you'll see the capacitor begin to recharge after I boost. Um, if I go ahead and empty that capacitor, you'll see that charging has stopped. And if I boost again, it is not going to recharge. Um, this is pretty obvious, but the thing that is a slightly less obvious is that that is also related to your turn speed and uh, overall top speed. Um, for example, I'll empty this again and just go full throttle and we'll see how fast this ship will go. So it looks like we're going to peak out at 200 meters a second. I'm going to go ahead and put some pips into engines, and suddenly we're going over 300. And um, that goes for turning rate too. Like, everything's going to be uh, faster and nippier and zippier with pips and engines. Uh, next, let's talk about the systems capacitor. The systems capacitor drains when you use things like chaff and heat sinks, um, other countermeasures, uh, things like that. So if it, if there's nothing in your system's capacitor, if it is drained, you won't be able to fire those things. It will say low power. Uh, this also affects your shield regen rate. Uh, so your shields, if they need to charge, will charge faster with pips into systems. Uh, the more, the faster they'll charge. And because you'll also notice that when your shields are charging, they will drain the system's capacitor. Uh, the secret thing about the system's capacitor is that the number of pips in it at any time directly impact the total uh, strength of your shield. Uh, for example, look at my ship stats. 176 is the shield on this ship. That is the shield strength uh, with zero pips and systems the way I have it right now. But as I put more in, it becomes stronger. And if there's four pips and systems, the shield is 2.5 times that strength. So... Um, you do well to juggle these pips around when you're in combat. If you know you're going to be taking fire, throw a bunch in there real quick. Uh, and then, you know, you're finished You're finished uh, with your opponent taking the, the firing pass. Then you can throw pips back into engines and move along um, and so on. Uh, the weapons capacitor uh, is drained by firing your weapons. Uh, the secret trick here is that it also impacts the amount of your weapon's heat 
that gets put into your ship. Um, so that's that's the uh, the basic idea. Um, you this is why you'll you'll want to be juggling these pips around a lot when you're in combat. You'll want to have a lot in systems if you know you're going to take fire or to crash into something. Um, engines as much as you can to stay mobile, uh, and then you know keep your weapons capacitor topped off when you can. Uh, a lot of times you can throw these pips somewhere else and then fire your weapons for a bit and then your firing pass might be done and you can throw pips into engines to move around for another one and then as you're coming back in charge that capacitor back up again before you begin firing so that you don't get too much heat on your ship. All right I'm gonna go ahead and land I think. And um, the next thing I was going to talk about is some other details about the uh, different kinds of um, weapons and different some other different things about the ship. Uh, so we'll just set it down here. Um, okay. So here's here's something that not everybody knows. Uh, the the hard point size. Uh, takes what what is sometimes called a damage penalty against larger size ships. Um, this is mostly related to uh, the piercing value and the armor hardness rating value of certain ships. But simply put, it can be thought of this way. Uh, the size hard point, so like size one, size two, size three, versus small, medium, or large ships uh, takes like about a one third or two thirds damage penalty. So right now, uh, if I, like on this ship, I have size one uh, burst lasers and size two multi cannons. So the burst laser is size one. So against uh, a small ship, it will do 100% of its damage. Uh, against a medium ship, it will do 66% of its damage, only two thirds. And against a large ship, only one third, 33% of its total damage. Um, whereas the size two hard points, the multi cannons in this case will do full damage to small and full damage to medium because they're size two. And they will do 66% of their damage, only two thirds to uh, large ships. Um, now that's that's the simplified way of thinking about it. It's a good rule of thumb that there are things to do with armor hardness that, that are actually involved in this calculation. So it's slightly more complicated than that, but just for simplicities, that's what we'll do. And for that reason, um, there are some weapons that don't seem to be affected by this, like uh, railguns, I believe, all have 100 for uh, their piercing value. So they should do full damage to any size ship. Um, but you can play around with that in Coriolis or... or uh, something. Uh, the next thing is uh, laser types. Uh, there are three types of lasers. People often ask what is the difference, like what they should use. Um, this is actually fairly simple. They're, they're somewhat linear. The uh, pulse laser is the lowest energy and lowest damage. The burst laser is essentially the same thing, but with a scaled up damage and scaled up energy usage. In fact, it's the ratio is the same. So the burst laser does the same damage per energy as the pulse laser, but it dishes that damage out faster and thus consumes the energy faster. So um, that's that's the difference there. The, the third uh, laser type is the beam laser, which is like the constant fire rather than um, distinct shots. This is the highest energy consumption and the highest damage. However, the ratio is actually slightly lower. So you're paying a bit of an energy penalty to get that higher damage in this case. It's not exactly the same ratio as it is with the pulse versus burst. Um, other weapon types, uh, in, you know, the multi cannons and uh, regular cannons, these are very, uh, and frag cannons as well. These are very low energy, low heat weapons. So you can fit them into a ship build without needing to consume much energy. That means you're going to be able to have fewer pips and weapons, and you'll be able to use those pips elsewhere. Um, there are some other um, weapons, uh, well, 
missiles and things like that are also fairly low energy, although they do generate quite a bit of heat. So you do have to be careful that you're not letting that weapons capacitor get really low because firing a lot of missiles with almost nothing in your weapons capacitor, you know, even if you still have enough energy to actually fire the weapon, you'll dump a ton of heat into your ship uh, because of that side effect of the weapons capacitor that we talked about earlier. Um, additionally to that, we have railguns, which have... Um, they're a, a hit, what's called a hit scan weapon, just like lasers. They they fire in a straight line, um, and they have essentially no noticeable travel time. They you can consider them an instantaneous hit. Um, so for that reason, they can be easy to aim at distant ships, uh, but they have a downside. That's the trigger lag. So basically, you squeeze the trigger, and the gun will charge up and then fire after a short time. So that's something you have to get used to, to use railguns effectively. Um, timing that so that when when it actually hits that peak charge and fires the railgun shot, it, you'll be your target reticle on the uh, enemy ship at that time. Um, the other type is uh, a plasma accelerator. This is a, a another kind of projectile weapon. This one does have a travel time, but it's very high heat, very high energy, <laughs> very high damage. Um, these are kind of more advanced things. The the railguns and plasmas only come in fixed variants. Um, pretty much everything else comes, um, you know, either gimbaled or fixed. Um, speaking of gimbals and fixed weapons and turrets, they, the fixed variants of these weapons always do more damage. Um, the exact ratio, I'm not exactly sure, but but basically it's it's significant. So if, if you can manage to get yourself used to fixed weapons, you'll be ha have a much higher damage output um, if you can use them effectively. Uh, but gimbals have that tracking assist, so they will be um, aiming for you at the enemy as long as you can target them. And then this is what uh, chaff, the countermeasure chaff, um, goes to uh, effect is uh, scrambling gimbals. Uh, turrets likewise have even a wider ability to aim around and they can either also be put into like a fire at will mode or fire at my target mode and sometimes even shoot behind your ship, um, but they have a much um, lower damage output uh, compared to uh, gimbals and, and then of course fixed even more. Um, so countermeasures, like I mentioned chaff, uh, scrambles, gimbals. Um, the other uh, other countermeasures, I mean, technically a heat sink could be a countermeasure because if your heat goes low enough, uh, ships you'll drop off of ship scanners um, because your heat will be low. This is also what silent running accomplishes. You know, you, you essentially drop your heat output to zero and nobody can get a lock on you. Um, this would also break missile locks, but it does not work if the missile's already been fired for some reason. Um, the the way to counter um, seeker missiles that have already been fired is with an ECM, electronic countermeasure. So this is yet another utility slot uh, thing. Um, so in order to have countermeasures for all those things, you'd have to be carrying that, you know, as well. Um, so that's my notes for that section. The next thing I was going to say is um, optimizing the ship. And you know what? I might just go in and um, look at an outfitting screen for this. Sorry, I'm looking down. If I look down like this, it's because I have notes here that isn't being recorded onto the video. Um, so yeah, let's go into outfitting. Um, okay, so quickly let's touch on module rating. Um, when you're building a ship, you're going to see letters next to the, the module types and uh, a significant cost difference between them too. If you're, oh, I forgot I made this ship yellow. Wow. Okay, anyway, um, so let's go right in here. So I, I'm on my carrier where I don't have stock of anything, but um, I have A-rated this ship. Um, just to go over like basically what the letters mean, um, A is typically the highest grade, um, but that does not always that does not always mean it is the best for any given situation, right? So in the case of a frame shift drive, you know, it definitely is, but basically a rated is sort of the highest grade. It will be, um, the strongest, the most powerful, the fastest, you know, in the case of thrusters, um, whatever, um, B is the module type that has the highest integrity. You'll see that those, the B rated modules will have a higher integrity than a, 
Um, but they also weigh the most uh, as far as mass is concerned. So that can have detrimental effects on what your ship's doing, slowing it down uh, in both jump range and in normal space speed. Um, the C-rated module, I th think for the most part, I've heard someone say that that is the best sort of value for the cost, like as, as far as performance per credits is concerned. Um, but C is the, the module that I never end up fitting to a ship. Um, but th there could be edge cases, like in the case of um, the kill warrant scanner, the only thing that's changing with the rating is the scanner range and the energy use of it. So depending on how much energy I have free in the power plant of a ship build, I might choose to fit something other than an A-rated scanner and it might end up being a C because um, it doesn't seem to have any other downsides really. Uh, D is always the least massive module, so the lightest. Um, so that Explorer builds will end up with D. Um, I do often, I didn't in this case, but when we're engineering, I do end up fitting D-rated sensors and putting long-range scanner mod on them. But for the sake of this um, intro uh, section that we're doing here, uh, I'm not doing anything with engineering. So D is uh, very lightweight. They're also pretty low integrity. E is what your ships all come with. Um, these are the lowest grade um, typically the lowest energy usage also for the times when we're paying attention to that but for the most part um for the most part you upgrade those uh, and there's not usually much reason to fit an e and especially until we get into engineering some things so um okay the next thing on my notes the largest hard points should be intended to damage hull now the reason i say this is because of that uh hard point size damage penalty thing that I'm talking about now. This is, like I said, related to sort of armor hardness and piercing value. Larger hard points have a higher piercing value, and that's what's causing this. Um, because when we're damaging shields, there is nothing to do with armor hardness going on here. So it doesn't matter if it's an anaconda or a viper or a sidewinder. You know, your damage is is being sent to... Your, your damage is hitting the shield, so um, there's no there's no armor hardness. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, for this reason, we generally, at least when I'm recommending builds and when I'm building things for myself, I, I, I use the larger hard points, uh, basically be kinetic damage, um, so that um, my hard points will have the highest armor piercing. So 37 on these size two multi-cannons is my armor piercing, whereas the burst lasers are size one and uh, their armor piercing is only 20. When we're Especially when we're talking right now about unengineered ships, uh, your armor, let's go to core so we can get these. So the, this is um, the military. This is basically the, the upgraded uh, non-engineered armor. Um, has a default uh, resistance to uh, kinetic at minus 20. And uh, it's also weak to thermal, but uh, sorry, weak to explosive uh, and, and uh, neutral to thermal damage. Um, but that means that if I can use either explosive or kinetic against unengineered ship hulls, I'll do more damage. Um, I'm also having my the weapons that have the highest piercing armor piercing value um, be sort of aiming at that hull. Um, once we get into engineering, of course, we can change those resistances, so it's a little bit less important. But for NPC ships um, out in Hazrez, many of them still aren't engineered ships, so you can expect that their hulls will be weak to kinetic and explosive damage. Um, if we go look at shield, it will show us our shield stats. Um, so... Here we'll see shields by, uh, in their vanilla flavor, are weak to thermal and strong to everything else. Um, so it's a good bet that we'll uh, use thermal damage to hit them. Thermal damage comes from lasers. Uh, Railguns are actually 60-40 uh, thermal and kinetic. So 60% um, uh, thermal. And... Um, Plasma accelerators, 
are, are actually unique in that they are um, 60% absolute damage and then 20 and 20 between uh, kinetic and thermal. Um, absolute damage means it ignores all the resistances. That becomes more important, of course, when we start engineering ships because we'll be, we'll be building up all those resistances, but that means the absolute damage is still going to cut through to that base shield rating uh, before any resistances are factored in. Uh, that's why the plasma accelerator is such a monster. Um, okay, so that that's my, my theory. That's my sort of reasoning behind always suggesting that your largest hard points are based on kinetic damage. Um, because we want the, the weapons on your ship with the highest armor piercing to be hitting, to be doing the most damage to hull. So let's make them kinetic types so that they can be sort of defaulting to the weak point of a hull. Um, the side effect, the fortunate and very, very happy side effect of this is that typically kinetic damage weapons are pretty low energy. Uh, the multi cannons, cannons, frag cannons, all of these are pretty low energy consumption. Um, and since those are those larger weapons will consume more energy, that makes everything easier for us, right? Because our larger weapons are, are have a low base energy consumption. That's just going to make it easier for us to manage our distributor. So um, that's, that's what I'm going for. Hardpoint placement. Um, there's a lot of ships like this. I, I, I just stuck the... Um, uh, you know, I, I was sort of hem, uh, uh, constrained by where the large and, or, or sorry, the uh, medium and small hard points are, uh, with the mediums being underneath down here and then the large on, or the uh, smalls on top. Um, but for many ships, in fact, why don't I click over to a different ship here where this becomes obvious? Um, the classic example. Let's pull out the Fertilance. Um, classic example is a Fertilance. It has a very symmetrical hardpoint loadout, and I see people all the time kind of wanting to kind of maintain that symmetry. Um, and I am going to recommend you get over your need for symmetry. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, in space, no one can hear your symmetry. Uh, so let's go ahead and launch so I can show you what I mean here. Um, we want our hard points to be grouped so that we can hit a very small point in space with them um, so that we can always be sure we're, you know, landing our shots on the target eff effectively. Um, I don't know if I even set fire groups in this ship. I sure didn't. Okay, so um, I've got... I'm going to put these on my uh, secondary and then the plasma accelerator. So this is kind of like a typical quote unquote meta build for um, a Fertilance. Um, so instead of, instead of making this build symmetrical, I stuck the rail guns on the left sides and the, um, the plasma on the right. I wonder if I can uh, go into external camera, pan around a little bit here. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so here we've got plasma on the right side of the ship, and there it's the big guy underneath, and then the rail guns um, here on the on the left. Um, so let's go back inside my cockpit. Um, okay, so rather than like putting the rail guns on the wings or something like that, I, I want those dots to be close together for whatever is going to be fired. Um, okay, so basically I'm going to charge my rail guns. There we go. I need to take the discovery scanner out of this fire group. Um, so you see those are very close together, which means, you know, even at long range, I'm going to be able to hit a very narrow target with that. And likewise with the plasma, they're all grouped on there on the right side. So I they're all going to effectively kind of group um, and, and be able to hit smaller ships that way. Um, the other, I mean, these are these, m most of the small ships that you're going to be starting with in combat um, really aren't going to care much about this because they're, the ship size is so small. Um, they're just not, you know, it's just not going to be that much of a problem. But when you start getting into medium ships and especially large ships, uh, the hard point spacing uh, does start to matter. Um, oh, you didn't like that. 
There we go. Um, the Mamba is even worse. The Mamba is like super wide placement of its hard points and you know in order to get all of my shots to land I basically stuck plasma in the middle and on the right and then I put a frag cannon on the other side because I wanted them to be independent and have sort of different uses and I'll end up leaning the ship one way to shoot one gun and leaning it the other way to shoot the other um, so it's a good thing to get used to uh, let's see next up um, shield tank versus hull tank. Um, some ships have really strong base shields, and that's kind of the way you'll end up wanting to build them. You'll use cell banks or something to sort of maintain that shield. Uh, and when your shields drop, that might be when you leave, because there isn't that much underneath. I'm not saying leave nothing underneath as far as hull strength, but you're, you're basing it mainly on shield. Um, there aren't too many of the small ships that are designed this way, but like the FDL is a famous shield tank and, and a bunch of the larger ships do kind of, uh, or can can fly well uh, built that way. But uh, with the hull tank, we are kind of having a thick skin underneath, so to speak. Um, and so you can kind of, you kind of build your ship where you're expecting the shields to drop sometimes uh, and then come back several times during the fight and the, those shields are, are essentially like you know think of them as regenerating hit points um, you know use them when they're on uh, when they're when they're off you know finish whatever battle you're in and then maybe give them a second to recharge um, shields do only regenerate when you're not taking fire by the way that's kind of an important detail so if you're just constantly taking fire even with a by weave um, you're going to have really a lot of trouble regening your shields um, so it's good to get out of the way get out of fire um and you know don't forget about evasion too like this is this is important so when you start building something that's going to be a hull tank it can get very heavy um, which slows your physical speed down as well uh, and that you know that can have a, a negative impact um, but mostly just be aware of it and uh, know what you're flying and and uh, how you're intending it to be used if your ship is light and fast then you're meaning to avoid fire and you know use that theory use that method um, you're going to want to, if you start taking fire, don't just sit there and take it, you know, move, move away, uh, evade, um, come back and uh, take your opportunities at, at damaging your opponents um, opportunistically, <laughs> opportunities op optimistically, that's, that's good. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't just sit there and face tank a bunch of damage if your ship is made to be fast and light. You're going to want to move away, try to get around behind them, get out of range of the guns, um, wait for a better opportunity to strike when you have the advantage. And it's all about keeping kind of a positional advantage that it works better for your ship than it does for your opponent's ship. Um, let's see, Don't uh, let's touch on power priorities. Now, um, you probably saw when I deployed the hard points on this ship, uh, some of it shut down <laughs> and it said, uh, you know, power plant overload. Um, that's what these little priority switches are for. Now, um, mostly what I'm doing here is like, here's what I've set, like the cargo hatch um, is basically set to priority four. I've built this ship and it looks like the FSD interdictor is also that way because I'm never going to need that in normal space, right? Um, so that's easy to turn that off. Um, anytime I'm deploying my hard points, I'm not going to be using the FSD interdictor, so no big deal. Um, but effectively, that means that I can build my ship to use more, slightly more than 100% of what's in its power supply, what's available, uh, and still get away with it. Um, and by setting these priorities, they'll, the modules will turn on and off automatically when I deploy or retract my hard points. Um, the other thing that I've done here, and this is kind of a... Um, this is kind of a PvP thing, um, but I have set uh, I've set up mo most things to priority two, and the only things in priority one are the things that I would need to escape in a, a absolutely last resort. And the reason for that is I'm trying to get that uh, group one power group one under forty percent of the total uh, power plant supply. 
because if my power plant becomes damaged, it's essentially in the modules, if the, uh, where are you power plant? If the power plant dropped to 0% health, then um, it would only produce 40% of its total power. So if I can get, if I can get into, in, uh, you know, if I can get enough things below 40%, the in this case thrusters i still want to be able to move and the fsd would be good power distributor um, not essential actually because the only thing your power distributor module does is allow you to change pips around um, so if that's off or destroyed my ship still works it just works however the pips were configured um, before it turned off or before it was destroyed uh, so you could still uh, get away um, like all my guns are too at the point where my power plant has been shot out and it's at zero percent I'm not concerned with having guns um, I'm able to get life support in here shield booster that doesn't need to be in power priority one um, frame shift drive I want that in power one because I want to be able to high wake to the next system uh, in the event that my power plant gets shot out so if you can do this in a ship build um, I have found that it's a real struggle until you get into engineering. It's a real, real struggle um, to get your FSD and thrusters and everything into power priority one and have it be below 40%. But um, more on that, I guess, in, in a later in a later um, video. So um, the last thing I have in my notes here, simplified fire groups are your friend. Uh, what I mean by that is um, I don't like to have personally if I can avoid it, I would only like to have one fire group that has weapons in it. I don't really love um, messing around with all those things in the middle of a fight, rotating my fire groups and forgetting which one I'm on. I'd really like to be able to move that very quickly. Um, so with this ship, I've basically only put two types of guns on it so that I can get away with that. Um, here's an example of a ship where that didn't work out. Um, but I've minimized it kind of as much as I can. Um, so on my Mamba, I have plasma accelerators, I have a frag cannon, and then I have two small rail guns. So um, the way I've uh, got these arranged is the, um, as, as I said before about the symmetry, um, on the right side and on the center are plasma accelerators, and then on the left is, is that pacifier frag cannon. Uh, and then the railguns I've had on another fire group. Uh, there's just nothing I can do about uh, about that. I have been told by some people that they managed to put railguns and plasma on the same fire group, um, meaning that basically, like, if you just tap the trigger, it'll fire the plasma, whereas if you hold it down, it'll fire the plasma and then fire the rails. Um, I suppose, you know, I'm told that that works. That's not how I do it. It seems like I, I don't want to be firing plasma and using all of that energy and heat um, sort of for nothing when I'm not going to be lined up for that shot because at the time that I'm trying to use the railgun, I'm obviously lined up for a railgun shot. So um, simplified power groups um, are your friends. Um, so at this point, um, I would probably jump into um, a little bit of kind of trying to demo some of this stuff. And for this purpose, um, I went ahead and built some ships. Um, so what I made here... Um, are three ships that are, are sort of attainable builds for new commanders. Uh, I did not engineer anything on these, um, which was sort of fun because I haven't I haven't really flown an unengineered ship in a very very long time, and it was interesting to build something without having to go and engineer it. But um, so this is kind of like what you'd be looking at as sort of a first dedicated combat ship. Uh, I'm going to kind of show you what's going on here. So I, I made I made sort of two versions. Um, so we've looked at this already in this video, but um, the basic idea here is I just A-rated everything. You know, I have military composite, A-rated everything else, um, just to give the, us the most advantage we possibly can. Um, for utilities, uh, I think I used to have a chaff on here that must be sitting in my... Yeah, here we go. Okay, so for utilities, this on this Viper, this is a what I would recommend as sort of a first... Well, this is a good option for a, for a very first car, uh, combat ship. Um, the Viper is fast and light, but 
you know, it's really designed around combat. So even though it's not very expensive, you see like my insurance cost on this is only 127,000 credits. Um, so even pretty new commanders will be able to afford that. I mean, if you if you do fail at this and you get shot down, which is not a big deal, um, go ahead and get shot down a few times just to um, break the ice on that. And then you'll feel less nervous about it. Um, but then it, it won't be very costly. So it's an inexpensive uh, ship to build. Um, the hard points I chose for it are the size two multi cannons, like I was showing earlier. Uh, everything's gimbaled on this ship, and then uh, burst lasers in the size one. So once again, we're using the larger hard points for kinetic damage, their lower energy consumption, and their damage output is great. Uh, and then um, uh, lasers uh, here. Um, I've seen people kind of be leery of using ammunition-based weapons, like wanting to stick with all lasers, because what if I run out of ammo? But um, it, it takes a long time to run out of ammo, and it shouldn't be that big a deal to to go back in and you know, run repairs on your ship, refuel, things like that when you need to get ammo. Um, you can also synth synthesize uh, multi-cannon ammo, and it's very cheap. It just requires some uh, you know, grade one mats, um, which is easy, easy to come by. Um, but we don't have to get into that if you don't want to. It's very easy to just reload. Um, for the optionals, on the Viper, I'm bringing a biweave shield. All of these combat ships, I'm, it's basically until you get into prismatics, and, and even then I still kind of like biweaves a lot, a lot of the time on many, many ships. Um, the biweave, uh, I think, ends up being better in almost every case for combat compared to the A-rated shield. Um, that faster recharge means your shields are going to come back quicker, um, come back quicker between sections of a fight. And regenerating hit points are worth more than more raw hit points. Uh, because if you're going to be in a fight for longer than just one or two ships, um, you're going to want them to be regenerating just as fast as you can. So the bi-weave is the way to go. It has that faster recharge, even though it has a lower total uh, power. Um, other than that, I stacked this up with hull reinforcements. There's two size three hull reinforcements here. I put a module reinforcement on here. This is going to protect um, when modules take damage, it's protecting them 60% and it itself has an integrity of 105 for this size two one. Um, and then another size one module, a size one hull. You know, basically these are balanced. Um, so we end up with um, a total shield strength of 176 and then... Um, Total hull strength of 875, which is pretty great for this size of a ship, unengineered. Um, that's that's really pretty outstanding hull strength. Um, I also put a fuel scoop on here uh, because I'm thinking these are for newer commanders, these uh, suggested builds, and I don't think you want to be out there without a fuel scoop. So I'm just always putting a fuel scoop on there because I think you should have one and I don't want to be sort of like lying about what the build uh, is useful for because um, you're not going to have a fleet carrier to be uh, zipping your ships around and, and things like that. So this might be, you know, the, the second ship you ever buy uh, or something, you know, so I, we, we're fitting a fuel scoop. Just, just have one, just have one. Um, the next option... Um, I also laid out a uh, Cobra Mark III. Um, here it is. Now, this is essentially a mirror of the same Viper build as far as the hard points are concerned, um, but the build works out a little differently because this ship has different internals. Uh, essentially, this is a more expensive ship to get. Um, it's a little less nimble, but it's actually faster than the Viper in a straight line. And um, this is much more versatile. Uh, this ship could be a, a much more of a versatile mission runner um, because of the extra space it has in its internals. The ship also, by the way, I was able to fit all this stuff in here without overloading the power supply, so you don't need to go into that power priorities business. Um, okay. So let's see, I think we got up to really, really similar hull and shield numbers on this as well, although I think... Um, the Viper might be just slightly edging it out. Um, the hard points are the same, like I said. So with small burst lasers, in this case, they're on the bottom of for a Cobra. And, and then um, the multi-cannons. Um, utilities, once again, brought a shield booster. 
and a chaff launcher uh, to confuse gimbals. A rated everything else. Um, this ship is is larger and heavier, but it has um, higher, uh, si bigger size components. The insurance cost three hundred fifteen thousand, so a bit more. Um, but you could it's probably easier to make more money in this ship uh, because you'll be able to, you'll sort of have a wider variety of missions that you can take. Um, you could uh, you know swap some of the internals and do something. So here, like I've gotten to really similar hull integrity numbers as the Viper. Uh, and I've still, one of my size four slots is used up by a cargo rack. So right away you can carry 16 tons of cargo for small delivery missions and things like that. Um, or if there was something you need to pick up, black box recovery missions and this sort of stuff. Um, but everything else is pretty standard. So we've got hull reinforcements and uh, biweave shield in the biggest slots. Uh, there's our module reinforcement. In this case, we got a 2A fuel scoop. So that's bigger, better scoop. Um, I also put a planetary vehicle hanger on here. So this is much more of a, um, this will work as your starter combat ship um, while being versatile enough to do surface missions, um, uh, go <laughs> scouring the surface and playing around in your SRV. Um, it has a detailed surface scanner, so you can do that sort of thing too. So much more of a mission runner uh, build, not, not strictly combat, but it, this is what this build becomes when you put it onto a Cobra. Um, since we're here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the last ship that I made, again, with no engineering. This is, I think, what everybody should be, if you're just starting out, like, combat, um, just getting started with combat, this should be sort of your first big goal. And this is the Vulture. This is a lot more expensive um, but this ship is so great. I still fly my engineered Vulture all the time, even though I have all the big ships and, and Corvettes and things, um, Mambas and FDLs, you know. Um, this ship is so much fun, and at this time, like getting started with combat, it's such a massive heavy hitter. And the main reason is it has two size three hard points on a small ship. Plus this cockpit is just amazing yeah, in VR. But um, let's take a look at the outfitting on this. So um, once again, A-rated everything, um, just like uh, the other ones. Uh, for the optionals here, uh, we used a size five biweave. We've got hull reinforcements in the other big slots. Here's a module in the size two, a couple of small hull reinforcements, and then another module and I, uh, a reinforcement, and I put the uh, the fuel scoop on here as promised. Um, for utilities, we've got two chaff launchers uh, and then a shield booster and heat sink. <laughs> um, two chaff launchers means you can actually fire them and you could fire the next one while the first is still reloading, waiting to be fired again. So you could have, I mean, if you needed to, you could have almost constant chaff going on, which is going to lower your incoming damage a lot if your enemies are using gimbaled weapons or, or turreted weapons. Um, I probably would have put a shield booster on here, except we didn't have the energy for it by the time I got this build done. So the, the thing about the Vulture is its power plant is a little bit small, to be using two size three guns on a small ship. Um, so until you get into engineering and then everything changes, but for now, um, one shield booster is what we're gonna be sticking with. And then a heat sink in case we needed it. Um, heat sink can also be defensive, like I said, as, as you'll drop off of scanners when you go cold. Um, and then here's the hard points. Um, so once again, we're going with birth, burst lasers and multi cannons. I'm just trying to keep everything um, homogenous here for the sake of this uh, video. Um, but now uh, I'm actually going to make the multi cannon fixed. I think by the time you're getting to where this is the ship you're using, um, you know, we've got an insurance cost is almost a million on this build. And I think you should have some combat experience under your belt by the time you've gotten uh, enough money to build up this ship. And by then we should really be looking at trying to get used to fixed weapons. So this is my suggestion. Uh, the multi-cannon does considerably more damage if we make it fixed, but it's a little bit higher skill. So um, that's that's what I put on here for this suggested build. Um, okay.
so the next, uh, I think all there is to do next is to get out there and, and try to do it. So I guess I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and um, actually get one of these ships out and uh, fly it. So let, let's fly this Viper. I'm going to fly an unengineered ship. So let's see if I can pull it off, I guess. And we'll go over some kind of basic um, what what I would do uh, maneuvers, what to do in certain situations and things like that. And we'll kind of be creating these situations as we go. So I hope they work out um, and I hope I don't have to edit this video too much um, because I'm not uh, experienced at video editing. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but. Um, okay, so I've parked um, in a system that has some res sites. Um, these are in planetary rings, and that's typically, you know, the where a bunch of uh, NPC miners will be hanging out and pirates will be coming for those miners. Um, so let's get into Super Cruise first. And then we'll find a res site um, to try out these belts. Okay, so first of all, So I'm going to I'm going to pick a regular res site. Sorry, I'm turned away from the microphone. I don't know if that makes it sound weird or not, but um, the the hazardous res sites mean that there are no system security there um, to back you up. So we're going to start in a regular res site. Um, you'll you might see high or low. Those are different intensities, but they all have um, system security. Um, the reason for this is if you're not experienced at combat, you're going to want the backup. And so we're going to do something where we basically we're going to start off just to start off until you get used to things, until you're more, more sure of yourself. Um, follow the police around and uh, shoot ships that they shoot. And then you'll you'll essentially be fighting in a wing each time um, you start a new uh, engagement. And that helps uh, enormously because you won't have all that fire focused on you. And I need to move a little away from this gas giant here. Get some speed. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to narrate what's going on. Um, hopefully it's not too annoying that I talk too much, but um, for the sake of people who haven't done this before or... Um, whether they're new commanders or old commanders, if you just haven't done combat before, I'm, once again, I'm just trying to hit all of the details. All right, so here we are in a res site. And luckily it's not too awfully dark. Um, so here we are going to sort of scout around uh, for ships. All right, Sidewinder. Let's try to get something. All right, so he's engaged with system security. I'm going to get in there. Shields are down. I'm going to start firing. Now I hit him, and now if he blows up, which he's about to, boom. And see, I got I got paid for that kill, even though I just touched him for a second. Basically, you need to hit him while their shields are down, and then uh, system security can do the rest of the work. Um, and that's that's the idea. I'm gonna see if I can get something a little more dangerous going. Oh, that must be a wanted ship. He's getting fired on by system security. So we're gonna go ahead and light him up. That was quick. <laughs> um, it's good to have help. Um, I'm noticing since I'm flying this around here, the the Viper's lower hard points are pretty far back on the ship. Uh, those are the size two, so the multi cannons in this case. Um, the Cobra is sort of the opposite. The Cobra size two are on top, sort of right in front of the cockpit, and then the size ones are pretty far back. So you do need to make sure that your your ship is out of its own way before it can fire. Okay, so here we have a wing. Um, this is something I probably would not engage unless the system security was here. Um, because wings can be dangerous, even if they're not very high-level ships. 
Um, but since system security is here, I will feel much more comfortable. Now make sure we get that scan done first before we fire. Where's your other wingmate? So just two of them? Scanning through my ships here. Maybe there was the other one got destroyed very quickly. Um, who else is here? Let's go look at what system security is doing. Now, unfortunately, these fights are sort of ending so quickly, I'm not really talking about um, sort of the thruster control and stuff that I'm using, but um, we'll probably get into that a little bit more when we go to the Hazrez. Uh, I'm going to switch ships. So this this would be a good technique to use. Um, until you start feeling comfortable, you get a lot of kills under your belt. Um, and then... Um, Get into something a little higher powered. If you're, if you've gotten into the vulture, then um, that's a great time to decide you're ready, <laughs> basically for Hazrez instead. Um, with the Hazrez, you will not have police help. Um, sometimes the other NPCs do get in on the action, other bounty hunter NPCs, but for the most part, you can expect to be handling everything um, on your own, and. That means things can get dangerous, especially if there is a wing involved. All right, here we are. All right. Start scanning things. Now we don't have any police. All right, so the Cobra's deployed hard points. That's an awfully good sign that he's wanted. All right, this is a good place to start. A uh, small ship. So when I'm being scanned by a pirate, I'm going to let them finish their scan because right now he's going to keep facing me until he finishes his scan. Turn my lights on. And now he sees that I have nothing in my hold and he turns away. And so I want to get some really good position going on this clown. So now he's off paying attention to some other ship. I'm going to try to follow him here. And once I'm in a good position, sort of high and behind him, I'm going to go ahead and light him up. So right now I'm going to use my thrusters to push my ship behind him. and be thrusting down kind of that whole time. And now I'm gonna boost right after he boosted so my lag won't fall behind his lag. And, ooh, that. All right, I'm gonna boost right after to help us turn and then catch back up to him. That fixed multi-cannon is tough. Almost got shot in. Boost to catch up to him. Here's a good position. We're going to start in with the multi cannon. And right now, we got our multi cannon reloaded. We're going to push some chaff. I should have pushed chaff earlier. But I have two, so it's okay. And right now, I'm still like kind of down thrusting and. Um, I'm rolling so that I end up in kind of a corkscrew fashion. And then we're gonna try to quickly boost to turn around. And I can boost pretty quickly. I need to put some more pips and shields because I'm taking fire here. So we'll let the burst laser do its thing. More pips to engines. So I'm a lot tougher than his guns are prepared for. All right, he boosted, so I'm going to follow him by boosting. I need pips to engines to keep up with him. And right there, basically always pushing my thrusters in the direction of his engines so that I'm trying to stay out of his line of fire. So kind of down thrust right now. He, he used his speed to get away. 
and then that allowed her to turn on me. So if I can stay close to him, I have the advantage. So we'll boost kind of toward him, and I'm in a down thrust right now, and I'm also... Ooh, we'll get a little bump there. I'm also, when I'm, when I'm rotating around him, I'm going to try to position myself so that he has to yaw to keep up with me. So you'll see how I keep corkscrewing like that. And we'll boost right after he boosts and then... And we got him. All right. So at this point, I'll go ahead and charge up that shield with pips to systems. Okay. A DBX. This might be interesting. So this is a high level DBX. Let's see if I can get myself into trouble here. I'm gonna try to get a good position on him before I begin. Oh, see that was a little bit of a fail. Ah, he's got turrets. So I'm making sure to use my chaff because that's gonna confuse his uh, And I went cold too. So I'm gonna down thrust. Now I'm up thrusting to tighten that turn while I boosted. That allowed me to. I was turning up, so using the up thruster makes the turn tighter. So I'm gonna use chaff again. Let's try to lay into him with the multi cannon. There we go. And down, down, down. And we'll boost to catch up. Boost while up thrusting. One other thing that I can do while I'm boosting is if I'm using my lateral thrusters at the same time, I'm diverting some of that boost energy uh, away from the main thruster. So I won't go as far forward, but it'll still get the benefit of the enhanced turn. I'm really liking uh, being able to double chaff here. And the fact that I have a fixed weapon on here means this chaff is very meaningless to my multi cannon. Boost and up thrust to tighten the turn. And then forward full throttle. I'm going full throttle when I'm not needing to turn, but I'm wanting to get closer to him. And now I'm going to pull it back to the blue zone because I'm going to want to pre turn a little bit and we'll boost. Almost got him here. So I do a little boost sometimes where I, um, I start with a down thrust like this to turn quickly and then up thrust to sort of correct my velocity while the boost still has some energy. And he's jousting with me pretty good. So one other thing that we can do is we can use some backwards thrust here. Because his lasers are actually not as good at range as my multi cannon is, although it's Proving a little tough to hit him, so let's get in closer. Ah, the shield's gone down. There we go. So he finally somebody shot down my shield. Now we'll go ahead and feed pips into systems and see how quickly that bad boy comes up. Being a uh, bi weave. All right, anything else small out here? Another cobra. You're scanning me. What are you? Oh. The gunship might be a little, a little bit big for me to tackle right now. Clipper. That scout would be fun. 
Ah, now he's in a wing. With what? Uh, so these two, I think, are in a wing together. Um, Asp Scout and a Cobra. So what I would probably do in this case, if I was going to try to take these guys on, I don't know if I should try this or not. If I was going to try to take these guys on when, when approaching a wing by myself, I would try to pick out the weaker of the two, whichever one I think I can get rid of faster. Um, I think that would definitely be the Asp Scout. He's a lower combat rating and it's a big, big target, bigger than the Cobra. And so... Once again, I'll try to start at least from a very uh, good position here. We'll try to keep up with them. And I would like to get right onto his back, if possible. I sort of would love my shield to be full. The shield is still... Um, charging I can see it's still draining the system's capacitor uh, but I think it's there we go it's full now okay hey let's give this a shot see if we can take one of the oh look they've so they've engaged somebody else that gives me an even better opportunity to try to uh, get them while they're uh, previously engaged uh, so we've got Cell banks. I'm going to try to counteract those with just damage output. Here we go. Need more weapons energy. And we got him. Let's see if we can go get one of these others. His wingmate now, he's by himself. So let's try it. And he is engaged in another fight. So he will, yeah, so he's turned on me. Oh, so Dumpfire Missiles is shooting at me. So this is gonna be a great time to practice our corkscrew maneuver. So I'm going to try to get so that he has to yaw to chase me because that's typically the uh, the slowest turn rate on any ship is the yaw. So if I can, I'm going to rotate in that direction and try to boost out of his line of fire. And... And so far, I think he's managed to I managed to evade all of his missiles by sort of rolling at the same time as down thrusting. So even if he's following his uh, leading target indicator, by the time the travel time of the projectile gets to me, I'm no longer where I was uh, when he fired the shot at the hit reticle. And you can see it's actually causing him to miss with some of his multi-cannon runs, too. So we're running low on weapons capacitor, but I'm needing to keep a lot of pips into engines to keep up with this guy. Because uh, a Cobra is very quick. So I'm, yeah, I need to. So I pumped up my system and uh, engines capacitor because I was going to have to move to chase him now. I'm going to up thrust while I boost to tighten this turn, get back around to him and try to, oh, I let the weapons drain. Oh, now I needed insistence again. See, that was a mistake. I should have, uh, here we go. Now I should pre-charge my weapons and my engines. 
Let's use our chaff. Yeah, see that's what I thought. He's got gimbals, because as soon as I fire chaff, he just stops shooting. Alright, need to charge the shield a little bit. Boosting, up thrusting to try to tighten this turn. And he was trying to do the same thing, and it's not terrible positioning, but it's not great. His cell banks are really annoying. Alright. We fired more chaff, so we shouldn't take much damage on this run, and I also pumped up my shield pips. So we'll pump some back into engines, now we make the turn, and then back to shields. We'll chaff again. We've almost got him. Need more weapons, so I'll throw some in weapons for this turn. We're a little close right now. We'll boost again. I didn't really like how that was going. Okay, systems and weapons, please. Try to reverse thrust. Just keep him in sights long enough to kill him. There he goes. Target destroyed. All right. Well, that's the gist of that. Uh, I'm trying to think. So we did some evading projectiles with that corkscrew move. I'm trying to start from an advantage at least. And um, so I'm just looking at my notes, the boost timing. Um, what I was attempting to do, and most of the time I was getting it right, was um, if my opponent is boosting and turning to try to get around me, I'm trying to boost right after they do. So I'm able to sort of keep up, um, but I don't get stuck being the one um, facing turn lag at the end of the boost uh, with nothing to do about it. Um, that some of that might have honestly been easier in a in a quicker ship because the cobra is very fast um but this vulture is so tanky and powerful that that, that was a, a good way to you know ultimately it worked out we haven't really touched on projectile weapons uh because the multi-cannon isn't sort of like a single fire um, projectile but one thing that uh you know, when you're using a fixed weapon of any kind, um, this is really important for like plasmas and stuff is, you know, I'm talking about that corkscrew maneuver that I was doing where I'm kind of, I'm down, I, I'm, I'm doing a roll while I down thrust to sort of cause my ship to move in a corkscrew manner so that I'm never where the lead indicator says I'm going to be. I've already moved. Um, one thing that'll happen is ships will chase you while you're doing that. So when you're firing a projectile weapon back at them, sometimes you may need to lead them to stay where their lead uh, reticle says they're going to be, um, re you know, rather than them sort of mirroring your corkscrew move in order to keep you in sights. Um, so sometimes you straighten up to fire a cannon round or a plasma shot or perhaps a volley of multi-cannons or something um, to make sure that they do land. Um, with small ships, we're not going to get into kiting very much. I, I don't think, um, you know, until you can get into engineering, if you have like long range weapons or something like that, or, um, but I, I do this for larger ships kind of a lot. That's one of the ways that I end up fighting with my Corvette quite a bit is actually using some reverse thrust and uh, letting ships follow me um, to keep them keep them in range that way because it's going to be easier to turn up and down left right to sort of keep them in sights as they try to maneuver and evade fire. Um, better, you know, more important technique probably for large ships um, than for something like this. Um, that's about it. I mean, one thing that I didn't do was any um, FA off turning, um, so maybe we could demo that. I see someone attacking here. Um, this is a useful little thing. Like I, I still don't fly FA off all that much, and I was especially not doing it for uh, the sake of this video um, because it's a bit of um, 
a more advanced thing, um, but you can still toggle it off um, in order to do kind of... Um, it ends up being a faster turn. It's The effect of FA off is that um, you have sort of more lateral thruster power available because your thrusters aren't busy counteracting your, your vector. Like when I pulled down the throttle, my thrusters turned on to slow me to a stop because flight assist is on. Um, so if I click that off for a second, the reason I'm able to turn faster is I can tighten that turn with the thrusters and the thrusters are stronger because they aren't having their power split uh, to, to, um, to counteract uh, my, my flight vector. Um, basically, the way the maneuver is going to work is I'm going to be going forward pretty hard. I want to blue zone, then FA off, turn quickly, and then flight assist back on. And I can even follow it with a boost um, is typically a good plan um, because that'll recenter my vector quickly. You know, the, the effect of FA off is if I'm moving in this direction, I wish it didn't get dark in these rocks. I'll turn on this so we can actually use a rock to demo it. Um, there's a good one. Um, so if I go full throttle and um, if I were to FA off and then turn here, I'm still turning kind of slow. Um, really what you want in uh, in FA off is you, you still want to maintain the blue zone. Like you turn fastest when you're in this blue zone. Um, so the best way to do this FA off turn is going to be, let's see if I can demo this rock. So FA off, actually want to blue zone, then FA off, turn it around, click it back on. And that's sort of the basics. Now that becomes a tighter turn if we combine it with the thrusters. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say blue zone, FA off, thrust down, and then thrust up, and then flight assist back on. And I've like totally reversed direction very quickly. Um, the thing that can make this tricky in combat is that the ship that you're trying to turn on you know, you're gonna, when the flight assist is off, you're, you're gonna essentially be moving in a straight line, um, adjusted only by those little up and down thrusters that we did. So mostly you're moving in a straight line, which is gonna be away from the target. And that means while you're turning on them and regaining your firing angle faster, so are they. Um, so it's just something to, to be aware of and, and to know that it, you know, probably can't be used in every situation. Um, sometimes it's just as well to kind of just adjust with some thruster, either if I'm turning up, up thruster will tighten my turn. Um, whereas if I'm turning up, down thruster will sort of quicken my ability to see the thing that's behind me. And again, that's because that down thruster is a bit mimicking what the FA off turn is doing. You know, if I down thrust and turn, my ship is essentially moving away from what's behind me and crashing into a rock. <laughs> um, um, so anyway, so we went over about everything that's on my notes for this video. Um, we even tackled a wing, uh, making sure to take on the weaker of the two, whichever we think we can destroy faster first, uh, because when there's more than one ship uh, fighting you, they are going to, uh, you know, e even if they're small, weak ships, they still have hard points and that damage will add up quickly. I think it will be time now to, uh, say goodnight and, um, yeah, that, that, that'll be it for part one. And then, um, for part two, we'll get into, um, we'll, we'll get into engineering and what we can do to further increase and optimize our ships, increase our power and defenses. And um, yeah, that ought to be a fun one. And then uh, we'll probably demo a little more in that video and then maybe get into a, a conflict zone battle uh, because that is a totally different thing. Once again, even from Hazrez where you have no backup in the conflict zone, you're not just 
being attacked by whichever ship is hostile to you. The entire other team is hostile. and The ships are stronger. Typically, they have engineering, um, so it can be very tough. Um, so that'll be it for me. We'll see you next time. Signing off. <laughs>